to determine the value of an option, the well-known Black School formula is used. This formula is quantitative in nature. Now, to understand the intuition behind this BS model, there is an example that takes the combination of a call and a stock to eliminate the risk at all. This example also assumes that the stock prices be any of the two values. In this way, this assumption helps in eliminating the possibility that stock prices can take another value. Therefore, it helps in duplicating the call exactly. So, in our example, the model used is termed as a two state or binomial option model. So, in our two state model, we have an example where current stock price is $50, exercise price is $60 or $40. Now, we have a call option on this stock. The at the expiration date, uh, the period is one year, the uh, exercise price is $50. So, the investor's borrowing rate is 10%. Using these data, we need to determine the value of the call. Two strategies are there in this example. The strategy one is to buy the call simply and the second strategy includes two steps. The first is to buy one half share of the stock and at the second step we we need to borrow certain amount which in our example is 18.18 dollars and this 18.18 dollars is basically the present value of the uh, amount that we need to pay along with the principal to pay off our borrowing amount if we look at the payoffs of the two strategies we see that in the strategy one where we are buying the call if the price is uh, 50 dollars the payoff is 10 dollars and if the price is less than 50 or 40 dollars the payoff is zero means there is no exercise in this particular scenario and in the strategy two which is buy and borrowing strategy basically the payoff is 60 dollar uh, if the stock price is 60 dollars then the payoff is 10 dollars and in the other case the payoff doll is nothing so we see that the cash flows from the second strategy is matching of the cash flows from the first strategy which means that the future payoff structure in uh, the first strategy is is exactly duplicated under the second strategy this means that uh, each strategy is ending up the investors with the net payoff of dollar 10 if the uh, stock price rises above 50 and uh, if the stock price is falls below the dollar 50 then there is zero payoff under both the strategies so we can say that for the traders both these strategies are paying off an equal amount in both the scenarios so we have an equal amount in both the strategies for our traders now the question arises that how one can know the amount of one half as to uh, purchase the stock uh, to determine this portion which is one half in our case is uh, we need to help uh, we need to uh, take the help of a model that is termed as a delta ratio which is the ratio between the swing of the call and the swing of the stock price in our example this ratio is uh, 1 by 2 or the 50 percent of the half of the stock price this means that as one dollar swing in the call pr uh, st stock price gives rise a half dollar swing in the uh, price of the call so as this shows again a proportional increase in the price of value of the call as to the proportional increase in the stock price now while duplicating the call with the stock it seems sensible 
uh, sensible to buy, uh, to buy one half of the shares of the in stock instead of buying the full call as a whole. So the risk of buying one half of the share of the stock should be the same as the risk of buying the call as a whole. The second issue is that how to determine the amount to borrow in which is $20 in our example. In fact, the buying one half share of the stock brings us $30 or $20 at the expiry date which is exactly $20 more than the payoff of the $10 or the $0 as it happens in our example. This means that to duplicate the call through the stock purchase, enough amount should be there so that we can borrow the two, uh, we can borrow uh, and we can pay off the uh, principal amount and the interest thereon. And in our example, we need to borrow $20 to pay off our debt. Uh, 